Hello, hello, hello. How's the audio coming through? Let me go ahead and situate myself here while people come into the chat. Let me situate. And I wanted to stop by, drop a few thoughts about the recent happenings. The news that bring to mind the thoughts about life and thoughts about death. Well, first of all, Aaron B, how's the audio? Can you hear me out okay there? <laughs> yeah, life after death. A funny concept, right? A funny concept. Well, it's an appropriate time to reflect upon the topic of death and the topic of life. It's an appropriate time to reflect upon the topic of you getting your affairs in order. It's an appropriate time to ask the question, if I were to die today, what am I leaving behind? How organized is the pile of crap I'm leaving behind? Where is my stuff going to go? R.I.P. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. Apologies for the noise in the background. Again, I am in the lounge, business class lounge, getting ready to fly to Africa. R.I.P. to Kevin Samuels. So now he recently hit success. We know about him buying or paying off his mom's house. The question is, Where does the money go to? Where does the assets go to? How organized is your life? So basically, first thing that comes to mind is basically everybody should have a will and testament. Go to LegalZoom. Make a will. Can I get a one in the chat if anybody has a will? Put a one in the chat. We got 13 people in the building right now. Got 13 people in the building right now over here in the lounge, San Francisco airport, chilling. We got one one, okay. Blind guy, his wife, your life. We have another one, okay. And uh, Aaron B also has a will. Zero says the real Dana. Yes, 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 yes. And um, shout out to Dana in the building. It is a time, though, when we have these kinds of opportunities, these kinds of things happen. There is an opportunity to ask a certain critical questions, such as the one being asked right now. How of much of a mess do, are you going to leave behind? Right? And the idea is to clean up your affairs such that if you were to check out, you leave a clean, nice little receipt behind. Okay? So what I recommend is definitely get that wheel going. Also, go ahead and plan out your funeral. I don't care if you're 20 years old or you're 80 years old, right? Last time I checked, you're not invincible. Last time I checked, you're not made, you're not Superman. And even Superman's got his kryptonite, right? But the point is, you can go ahead and plan out your funeral, okay? You can research it right now, go ahead, check out Check out the packages that are out there and say, hey, I don't want anybody to have to worry about, am I getting cremated? Am I getting uh, buried? Where am I going to get buried? What should the ceremony look like? Right? Just have somebody take care of it. Because imagine when you are gone, when you die, when, 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 not an if, right? When, <laughs> when you check out, somebody's going to need to deal with it. Somebody, right? Shout out to Dr. Thunder in the building. Somebody's going to need to deal with the mess. Somebody's going to need to decide where are you going to be buried? How are you going to be buried? What does the ceremony look like? Did you want to be cremated or, you know, scattered? Um, or did you want to get chopped up? <laughs> Do you want to get buried, cremated, or maybe you want to get chopped up into like seven pieces and scattered into the seven seas? I don't know. But somebody needs to decide those things. And rather than have those people write in the moment of your passing while they should be grieving 
rather than have them having to think through those things and make those decisions, it is best that you handle it yourself. So would go the argument, right? So get the wheel. And now uh, plan the... What all does it have in it? Huh? What all does it have in it? Uh, Let me see right? here. What's going no, on? No, I want it Cosmo. Oh. Uh -huh. Aha. Right? Yeah. All right, cool. So I can reverse. Yeah. I can reverse things that way. Let me go ahead and read some of the chats. What's going on over here? Yes, yes, yes. Salute, Ike. R I P E K S. Indeed. Oh yes, Ray Hamna. Right now, some people are saying yes. It's a Thing that they need to work on that they do indeed need to work on getting the let me do a little work, walk around here let me do a little walk around as i'm talking people are saying that they need to walk work on getting the wheel planning their exit making sure that basically the people whom are left behind are not left behind with a mess are not left behind with something that's complicated too complicated and too messy, right? We don't want that. So greetings from the Bay Area. Yes, yes, yes. Greetings from the San Francisco Bay Area. So you can Google right now. You can look up, okay, how do I get a last will and testament? How do I create a living trust, for example? Right? A living trust is another way to go about or a trust, not just a living trust. A living trust is while you're still alive. But there are many ways to take care of your affairs, your debt, your assets. How, where, and in what manner you would want to be buried, right? And you pay for it, okay? So, but the first thing to do is life insurance, okay? We talked about the wheel. But that's because I was just preparing you guys. Shout out, shout out, shout out to the Super Chat in the building. The Super Chat in the building says, respect to getting will. Yes, indeed. Okay, salute to the lead attorney in the building. Okay, I'm just out here. I haven't had a drink in a, I haven't had a drink in a long time. Um, generally don't drink that much many it's, it's a keto thing it's a carbohydrate limiting thing it's a let's not put things that are inflammatory into our body thing but i am having a drink i'm having a hendrix on the rocks when i do drink i do like to keep it clean in terms of gin or vodka these days that is right i don't like the beer i don't like the hops i don't like the carbs generally speaking so if i'm gonna have a drink which i felt it was a suiting or uh, defeating location to have a drink again r.i.p kevin samuels what can we learn what are befitting questions apropos questions relevant questions about life and death that are appropriate to ask at this time because this is an opportunity for us to ask for us to set our uh, our arrangements in order it could be any of us now it's kevin samuels tomorrow it's uh you know it's ike <laughs> Yeah, we saw him last at the San Francisco airport, but I guess he didn't make it. His plane did not land. Mm. All that is quite possible. So, besides the wheel, the other thing that everybody should have is what? Life insurance. Now, so now let me get another one in the chat if people here actually have life insurance, okay? And is it a significant amount? Is it the group life insurance that you get at work or do you have separate term life insurance and have you appropriately listed the beneficiaries of these uh, assets, if you will. Because it's through the life insurance that you can make provisions for the payment for your funeral and all, all those other kinds of things. Like just make it such that the lives of the people left behind is gonna be a lot easier, right? Yes, I see ones in the chat. That's very good, that's very, very good. Dr. Thunder's got that life insurance, okay. Blind guy, his wife and wife's got that thing, says, looking for life insurance now. It is definitely worth it, okay? Now, you may be married, you may not be married. Um, the point being, the question that you're, we're asking here is, when you check out, if 
it's right now okay if you leave right now do you have a nice neat package left behind that could easily be in an automated fashion wrapped up an automated fashion meaning yes my funeral plans are already set yes i have life insurance that is meant to pay for that yes i have the beneficiaries nicely written such that i'm not going to leave my next of kin fighting you know paying probate attorneys shout out to the lead attorney in the building okay the lead attorney has enough en enough money already so i hear <laughs> okay lead attorney has more than enough money you don't need to go saddle him with more cash as a result of your ineptitude as a result of you not taking the right kinds of action in order to set up your affairs leave a nice neat little box that can be in an automated automated way automatic way dispatched with okay instructions wheels insurance policies okay 100% let me see what's going on in the chat here pardon me again just waiting for my flight RIP Kevin Samuels I'm having a drink to his memory in honor I believe they say of his memory and uh, as I say don't really drink often but about to get on the plane about to go cross continental or transcontinental so brothers out here getting sauced. You know what I'm saying? All right, 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 right. <laughs> Just kidding a little bit. Somebody says here, you were there since the beginning. Big Ike, you nearly bankrolled his success. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So right now these are informal words but it's definitely a very active decision on my part to ask these questions because the passing of Kevin Samuels has given us the opportunity to ask these questions and to perhaps make decisions in the light of giving this opportunity to ask these questions. Right? Make decisions to leave a nicer, cleaner set of affairs when we check out, right? Again, with the will, with the insurance, with clear instructions as to how you would like to go. What kind of music, for example, do you would, would you like played at your funeral? What kind of music do you like uh, played, uh, Dr. Thunder? You want, you want jazz played at your funeral? Or do you want uh, Burner Boy? Or you want Tupac? Hit him up. <laughs> right? These things, okay may matter to you or it may not matter to you but for some people what i just mentioned right now resonates with them the question about well what kind of music do i want right what kind of music do i want is a question that some people will be like hey you know what i would like to tell people hey at my funeral i want people laughing i want a comedian as a matter of fact to be the mc at my funeral right so that's something you can arrange you can arrange it you can set money aside to pay for it so that people don't have to worry. That way when you check out, people continue to have a good time, indeed. Dr. Thunder wants jazz math. <laughs> jazz math recited, a little inside joke there. Okay, because since, you know, these these black boys can't learn regular math. Maybe they need hip hop math or jazz math or something. Right? So goes the racist inside joke. But anyways, we are asking the question about last wills and testaments. We're asking the question about life insurance. We're asking questions about leaving our affairs in order. We're asking questions about how we would like the last ceremony in our honor, or at least one of the last significant ceremonies in our honor, in our funeral. How would we like it to be? And why wouldn't we plan it out? Why wouldn't we make it easy for those left behind to simply just click the play button and have everything unfold, unfurl, so they don't have to go to probate court, so they don't have to worry about, well, what would you like to have? And so they don't have to worry about, well, so you don't have to saddle them with bills 
and cost. That's a very important thing. Now, <laughs> perhaps it is important to mention here at the onset, since somebody mentioned here about them, my support for Kevin Samuels. Okay, my support for Kevin Samuels. There are many factions and many people feel passionately about the so-called talking points that are here in the manosphere. There are people who say, hey, there's too much of a focus on, shall we say, women, which I 100% agree with, by the way. Now, anyone who listens to my content knows that for sure. It is uh, just a default that I don't necessarily talk about women in my, in my uh, content. Um, it's just natural. It's a default of mine. I don't think about it. I was at a Bernard Riley show a couple of weeks ago, Sunday, and I said, hey, here are four things that men need to do in the 21st century in order to persist and exist and thrive in the 21st century. And uh, someone noted that uh, out of those four things, I didn't mention anything about women. And I was like, hmm. I was taken aback by that statement in the sense that I did not consciously think not to mention women, but it again, it is natural to me not to even bring those things up because it has nothing to do with what a man should be. So my support for Kevin Samuels was about what then? What was it about? Was it about him talking to women? No. That's not what it was about. A big part of it was the image. Surprise, surprise. But a big part of it was the image. To see a, an African-American man who would otherwise be an ordinary man talking about men's issues, looking the way he does, talking about some of the more pragmatic things such as learning skills, he always mentioned how you always have to be improving on things. He talked about how selling and selling skills are very important. These things resonated deeply with me. And these things are something that I don't see very much in the, shall we say, African-American community vis-a-vis -vis men presenting information about what men need to know. The typical places it comes from is from athletes and entertainers. So you have athletes and ent entertainers telling you about money or telling you about you know, putting you up on game about some kind of skills that a man needs to have. Now, that's uh, uh, complete BS, in my opinion. <laughs> what I mean by BS is you should have a community whereby people can hear from regular average people about the things that are necessary to survive, to thrive, to expand, and to be a man. You don't have to be hearing it only from rappers and athletes. And yes, the African-American man or the black man can wear a suit, should wear suits, and does have the right to talk about macroeconomics, macroeconomics, or the Bernoulli equation, or whatever the hell he feels like talking about without having to get dragged into simple culture type stuff. What do I mean by culture type stuff? I'm talking about art and entertainment. I'm talking about aesthetics. So the fact that Kevin always made sure that when he was talking, for example, about his definition of the high value man, which is a mercantile, shall we say, uh, capitalist definition of the high value man, he always said, look, I'm not, I'm not including in my analysis athletes and entertainers. This is a big part of why I, sub I uh, support it. Okay, Kevin. Shout out to another super chat in the building. I think it says Nile Valley's finest. Well, thank you very much for the five dollar super chat. So, anyways, the idea, okay, of ordinary men unapologetically just saying what ordinary men should be concerned about and how ordinary men can succeed and expand, okay talking about the importance of image, importance of self-presentation, the importance of being able to communicate. Shout out to Jordan Peterson. He always talks about this as well, saying basically one of the most dangerous things that you can have as a weapon out there is to be articulate, articulate, which means you're able to think and you're able to express yourself, you're able to express your thoughts. So Kevin, okay, I was able to abstract from Kevin, these things, and these things that I mentioned are not 
foreign to the message he was putting out there, right? And these were the things that I cared about. So I didn't care about talking to women. And as I just mentioned, you could listen to my channel <laughs> and you know that that particular bent of aesthetics, entertainment, or a preoccupation with women is not something that, that I participate in. However, okay, I'm able to look past that, and I think that's an important thing also for us to learn, okay, because there's all this beef, all this back and forth, people not being able to look past certain issues of contention. There are points of contention, as I said, many different talking points that people have within this space, right? And the inability for people to look past it and to support that that you support or to support or to affirm that that you appreciate about somebody. To look past all the things that you disagree with insofar as they're not egregious things, right? You're not looking over a child molesting murderer just because you like his socks or something. But to be able to look past things, to be able to eat the meat and spit out the bones, as Kevin used to say, right? It's something that I think also we can learn from this particular moment. We can ask ourselves, because all the beef, all the back and forth, all the thousands of hours of content created, criticizing over nothing, right? <laughs> all that now is for what? For not, okay? If you've built your whole content profile and your channel profile and your whole identity online around, let's say, criticizing Kevin Samuels, but well, what are you going to do now? Right, where's your content going to come from now? <laughs> Shout out to Kaizoria in the building with another super chat. Shout out to Miss Tech Not Fancy in the building. We got Top Politics TV in the building saying yes, 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 yes. I follow you because of Kevin. Hope all as well. Yes, and um, you see, Kevin was quite generous to me in the same way that I was generous to him. Okay? And Kaizoria with the $2 super chat says, you sound like those black guys in the white manuscript. <laughs> oh yeah, talking about beef and stuff. Talking about, oh, we need to be able to get past certain things. Okay, well, let me take a step back now. We started this by asking questions that are relevant, that are pertinent, that are apropos when questions of life and death come up. So we're talking about wheels. We're talking about life insurance. We're talking about need, leaving a nice, neat, automatic package behind that people can push a button on and then your last wishes get enacted so that people don't have to go to probate court or worry or leave them with bills or worry about how you want to get buried and well, all that kind of stuff. It's a good time to look into it right now. Life insurance, wills and testaments, preparing for your own burial, right? I think that is just basic responsibility, right? It's like doing your dishes or it's like, you know, flushing the toilet or something. <laughs> In this case, it's li it literally is like flushing the toilet. You want to be able to get your, your, your sorry ass out of here in a nice, neat fashion. But then, here's this question of my support for Kevin Samuels. And I mentioned, well, here's why. He, these are the attributes that I found to be good. And it can be cleanly encapsulated in the image and in the emphasis that ordinary, not art and entertaining type men, okay, should have a voice and have an understanding of what is important in life and should unapologetically go out there and state, hey, expand, grow, learn to sell, put on a suit, be sharp, improve, that kind of stuff. And then there's the question of his support and his genuine generosity. And I would say, for example, I did not prompt Kevin to play my songs at his, in his uh, streams, in his early streams. This was not some kind of a deal that I called Kevin and said, hey, I got this song, would you like to promote it? No, he didn't do that. Uh, when I made my first video on YouTube on September of 2021, September 18, 2021, I was at the... Uh, the Mission Inn Hotel, okay? So he left a comment and he uh, he was supportive and he told me a couple of things, uh, gave me a couple of pointers about the video. He told me about the Rode microphone system that I could use, you know, to help my audio quality. He did not have to do that, 
Okay, this was not something that was solicited. He simply did. Okay, and then he made a video um, about um, with using pretty much a remix video of one of my songs. That was not something that I asked him to do either. He simply chose to do that. Okay, so there he is, leaving a comment, giving me tips about giving me tips about Rode Pro microphones and all that kind of stuff. Actually, I messed up by messing up the copyright situation on him. He got a copyright strike on his video because he was playing my songs, right? Because I had not properly set up for it not to be copyrighted. Okay. So, the last two points, okay, about what I noticed, the good attributes that I noticed, okay, in his message, and then also the good attributes that I noticed in his behavior. Okay. Those last two points, I think, are very important. And I think that these are points that we can all learn from. Of course, people are going to be back to their regular behavior on Tuesday. <laughs> so I am not naive about that. But while we have this drink, this Hendrix on the rocks with lime, we would like to give a toast to the memory of Kevin to the memory of a particularly interesting story arc to the understanding that beefing over irrelevant things is pointless because you're going to check out soon sooner or later anyways you're going to check out sooner or later it's not a question of if it's a question of when And if you're not able to go through life noticing the good things, the positive things in the direction that you would like things to go, right? Pushing things in the direction that you would like to go. Promoting people whom are going in the direction that you would like to go. Promoting aspects of those people, okay? Because if you were to put a magnifying gla glass on every aspect of yourself, you're going to be disgusted with yourself as well. You don't even agree with you 100% of the time, am I right? So if you don't even agree with you 100% of the time, what's the strange expectation that everyone is gonna be on code all the time, that you have to agree with everything that everyone is saying? Every word they used, every manner in which they used it, you know, you have to agree with their fashion sense too. You have to talk about his man purse, right? People gotta make videos about man purses and, uh, and postures and poses. That's the most bitch ass thing you can do with your life is to go around talking about someone else's purse. Now, any real man knows that that's a disgusting thing to go about doing with your stupid little lies, but openly, uh. <laughs> but you can, you can confess your sins. It's not too late to confess your sins and to make it right. Okay? And stop being a bitch ass N word. Yes, stop being a bitch ass nigga complaining about irrelevancies. But, anyways, ladies and gentlemen out here we'll be boarding the flight pretty soon and i wanted to drop a little impromptu video talking about things with you guys asking questions that hinge upon life and death looking into getting that life insurance getting that last will and te testament planning for your funeral okay and make sure those things are all up to date. Making sure those things are all up to date. Yeah, so hopefully what this would mean going forward is that uh, some things are going to be now more normalized. It should be more normal now for people to be able to, for men that is, right? man black man to be able to sit down talk about normal black men or normal man stuff about their finances about their careers about how the fact that uh, inflation is going to kill you about the fact that you're going to need to build something for yourself otherwise you're not going to get that two million that you need in order to retire these are things that kevin brought to the forefront 
these are the things that I noticed, anyways, that, that I agreed with, because, as I mentioned, life's too short to go around talking about the things that you don't agree with. I'm too busy doing crap. <laughs> so you push those things that you do agree with. So salute, salute, salute. We got Bowdy Thug in the building. We got Kaizoria in the building. And again, it was a good story arc. Another question, the last question that comes to mind, okay? Because we've asked the question about what kind of a package are we going to leave behind? What kind of a situation? What are our affairs going to look like that we, we are living for our next of kin? Right? Are we living them with decisions and burdens and debt and uh, bills to pay? Or do we have a nice, neat little package for them to be able to usher us out, okay? A nice little last gift for them and for ourselves. Last little piece of responsibility for ourselves as well. So that was one question, okay? It was one set of questions that hinge upon life and death. And then we talked about how the legacy of Kevin Samuels and the things that we can learn about maybe how some of us behave. And I talked personally about what I appreciated about Kevin, what I liked about his message, what I liked about his image, and why I supported him so much. And then I shared some of the behind the scenes things about how he was quite supportive as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And finally, we're going to ask, what next? What next? What next for the conversation that he was having? What next for, quote unquote, the manosphere? Zanodos Clutch says, I heard that Chaos was going to check out Europe for the first time. Ah, he was going to check out Europe for the first time later this year. A shame that he never got a chance. Indeed, indeed, he never got a chance to really enjoy all that wealth is. <laughs> uh, and I, that's a that's a that's definitely a relevant and appropriate question as well. The question of making it and then the enjoying. This is an it's a big reason why people always talk about the journey, right? People talk about the journey because if you don't enjoy the journey, then uh, a, you're not going to enjoy the destination, okay? Because when you're not enjoying the journey, the way the future. So when you actually arrive, you've not learned how to be okay with the moment. You've not learned how to be non-anxious and non-anxiety ridden. You've not learned how to be comfortable with what is, which is the moment. And that's all you always have. Can I get a one in the chat? if the statement that the moment is all you have makes sense. The moment is the only thing you ever have. Does that make sense? Is somebody confused as to that? Think about yesterday. You know what yesterday was? While yesterday was yesterday, it was the moment. The future, when the future comes, it's going to be the moment. There's only one thing that exists insofar as your relationship with time and existence. It's the moment. You only exist in the moment. You don't exist in the future. You don't exist in the past. If you don't know how to be comfortable with the moment, if you don't know how to be happy with the moment, if you don't know how to be non-anxiety ridden in the moment, then nothing's going to ever work out. You're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to find a happiness. There's no freaking silly, stupid destination you're trying to go to where all of a sudden everything's going to come together. No. If it's not coming together right now, it's never going to come together because the moment never changes. It never changes its character. It never changes its nowness. You're always there in the moment. If you don't stop and learn to enjoy it, you're never going to learn to enjoy it. There is no external event that's going to happen that's going to change the nature of how you experience the moment so fundamentally we all need to get over that thing whereby we're trying to pick false battles drag each other down 
Okay. But the whole moment thing came to mind because of what Xanatos said about, you know, him not getting the opportunity to enjoy his wealth. Well, if you're living in the moment, every day, every step of the journey should be satisfac you know, satisfying, bring some satisfaction, bring some sense of worthwhileness, right? Again, one of my sto favorite stories in the Bible, the story of Cain and Abel. Basically, Cain could not hang with the moment. Cain was always, uh, Cain was trying to live in the world of why his sacrifices were not working out and looking at Abel, comparing himself with Cain could not live with the moment, okay? Cain was resentful of the moment. Cain was resentful of existence, of reality, of God, and of success, okay? So, we see the struggle, and then we see success, and then we see how quickly after the success he found, he left. What does that teach us? Well simple lessons about enjoying the moment enjoying the journey and understanding that the moment is all you ever will have shout out shout out shout out please go ahead and click that like button click that subscribe button if you have not already okay I am that I am. The stress of success, past, present, and future simultaneously. Well, the past, present, and future simultaneously notion is just a different way of saying that the, the moment is all there ever is, right? It's the same thing. So the moment is, okay, that which, <laughs> the nexus of the past, present, and the future, right? So. And it is from an experiential standpoint, meaning from that first person perspective, is all you ever know. It's how you ever always exist. How does one deal with the stress of success? Rule number one. Okay? You guys taking notes? <laughs> Rule number one. How do you deal with the stress of success? Now, the rule number one is going to sound like a trivial rule. It's going to sound like a silly rule. But rule number one is to understand that the stress of success is all internal. So you got to know where the stress is, right? Number one, you got to know that it's an internal battle. That basically, it's a battle with anxiety. It's a battle with, uh, with heart rates and blood pressure and, um, and uh, sleepless nights and uh, veins popping on the side of your head mainly having to do with internal anxiety. Why? Because success involves pushing beyond your comfort zone. Now, the person that asked this question, okay, T. Riddler, I want you to push a one in the chat if the first aspect of the answer of the question makes, a sen makes sense, which basically is the first way you need to learn to deal with the stress of success is to understand that it is an internal battle that has to do with the fact that you're pushing past your zone of comfort. Success involves pushing past your zone of comfort. With that is going to come a natural, simple, basic anxiety. I don't care who you are. If you've never been there before, you're going to be a little anxious. Anxiety comes in different forms. It could be curiosity. It could be uh, in many forms. Okay, But that is the main thing, agitation and anxiety. So having recognized that, which is number one, number two is to recognize how your agitation and anxiety manifests in your life. It's going to be different for different people. Some people are going to lash out and be angry. Some people are going to eat food and get fat. Some people are going to procrastinate as a way of, shall we say, dealing with the anxiety. So that's step number two. Step number one, understanding that it's anxiety and it is internal stress. That's what the success is built on. It is built on that and is followed by that. And then number two, how does anxiety manifest itself in you? You, you, not everybody else, but you. Are you a warrior type of person, the kind of person that worries, sits, and it gets, you know, uh, put your hand on your jaw and your, your, your eyebrows are raised and you're tapping your feet and you're thinking, is that the way in which it manifests itself well then you want to watch out for that and you want to do things that are counter to that 
because it's all about saving energy, energy, energy. And that's number three. Number three is now that you've seen, okay, the way in which number two plays out, because so number two is how the stress manifests itself. Number three is find ways to mitigate the ways in which anxiety plays out in yourself so that you can reduce the no amount of energy that anxiety takes from you. So number one, understand that it's all anxiety. And anxiety is happening if you're pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. And that's what success means. Okay, so success is built on anxiety. Number two, how does anxiety manifest itself in your particular physiology, your particular physio physio physiognomy? So in my system, I say feelings in the body, image in the head, and talk in the head. So how, do, how does anxiety manifest itself in your feelings, your image, and your talk? And then number three, what are the ways in which you can reduce the energy that anxiety takes away from you? Okay, because that's the battle right there. It's going to be this internal, internal anxiety that's going to take away energy from you. The energy is going to cause you not to be able to perform at the levels you're able to perform. It's going to leave you at positions of indecision. You're not going to be able to make quick decisions, and you're going to collapse. So hopefully that is, gives a somewhat comprehensive answer to your question. Question being, how do you deal with the stress of success? Well, success comes from anxiety and with anxiety. So knowing that, that that's number one, internal battle of anxiety. Number two, how does anxiety manifest itself? Okay, and then how do you mitigate the energy sapping effects of such? Uh, somebody says they eat. <laughs> that's their thing. Yes, yes, yes. So you got to watch out for to eat. So you have a whole big battle. Let's say eating is your thing. You have a whole big lifelong, for the rest of your life, uh, strategic battle where you're going to be, there's going to be some wins and going to be some losses. And there's going to be some negotiations. You're going to negotiate with your tendency to eat. right? You're going to negotiate with your tendency to uh, clinch your fist or lash out. You're going to learn that tendency. You're going to learn how it starts, when it starts, okay? When you start to salivate in your mouth, when you, when the, you, when, how do you get into that mode where you're eating already before you even knew that you were anxious and that's why you're eating, right? You're gonna need to get into that place where you have this very granular, nuanced knowledge about yourself. Know thyself, right? Isn't that what they say? Isn't that what they said? So know thyself is the end of the answer that I just gave, right? Knowing that it's anxiety, knowing how anxiety manifests itself in your particular physiology, and then knowing how to block it so it doesn't sap away your energy. That's the beginning and end of the story. And by the way, go check out my meditation playlist. Right? Check out the meditation playlist. And in there, you will find modes of dealing with the anxiety dealing with any feeling any image or any talk that arises in your subjective consciousness right so that's how we roll yes 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 nicer in the building it says it's a sad day in the space thank you for reaching out Broke people have anxiety too, not just successful people. That is one of my um, my principles about, you know, stupid rich or stupid broke. You pick, you know, uh, you, you want rich problems or, or poor problems. You pick. Either way, you got problems. <laughs> you, you you think success is hard? Try being try being unsuccessful. Right? Think being rich is hard? Try being broke. Right? So point being, there is no freaking get out of jail free car there is no free lunch okay life is always based on stress struggle right that's how again your muscles grow your immune system grow that's life is by definition stress right there is no life without stress like life is stress life is this thing that is fighting against ent entropy right constantly fighting against entropy constantly fighting against the tendency of the universe to move towards dissolution and destruction but anyways ladies and gentlemen before we go too far before we get too philosophical before we get too verbose before we get too wordy ladies and gentlemen i am just stopping by here to give a few thoughts on life and to give a few thoughts on death
out here getting ready to fly to Africa where I'm going to be for about five weeks chilling enjoying a drink business class lounging yes why not <laughs> why why do all that hard work if you're not going to enjoy it right so give people their flowers while they're here give people their flowers while they're here life is too short for you to be a going around creating unnecessary factions or deepening factions unnecessarily. Deepening factions of, on what should be otherwise superficial differences. These differences that people fight over, these differences that people are beefing over, these differences that people are basing their whole content career over are very superficial. And you have to ask yourself, is that what you want to spend your time doing is deepening superficial features amongst us human beings life as i said is a struggle and is stress so without your help without the man malevolence without the malevolence of human beings life is already hard enough so why don't we go out there and try to make it easier at least both on ourselves and on others because life does not need your help to make it hard Okay. Deepening factions over superficial differences. Yes. It's what mainly. Point being this. As I wind down. You're too busy. You have too much to do. Your money is being inflated away so much. The fact that you need uh, the millions that you need to retire by is a, is a fact in front of you. And all these things are way too serious for you as a man to spend your time focusing on superficial differences that you have with people about superficial talking points, about superficial styles or modalities of being. Point is, when you go out there, you should be going out there looking for the positive in life, looking for the things that you agree with, is what I mean by positive, the things that you can actually push because there is no shortage of things that you can find negative. Okay. And everything takes energy. Hence, if you're going to spend a lot of your energy focusing on the negative things, well, you have to at least know that that's what you're doing. Hence, you're not going to have any energy left over for the things that you would actually like to see propagated and pushed. The things that you would like to see evolve. Okay. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Don't do anything to your offspring. That's also a good move as well. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and finish this drink, finish my sparkling water, uh, maybe have a little shot of espresso, and then I'm going to head in my flight where I'm going to comfortably fly to Turkey and then to uh, Ghana. And thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen, for showing up. Okay. Shout out to the super chatters in the building. Kai Zoria in the building. We have the Miss Tech Not Fancy, Niles Finest as well, Super Chatting, and also Big Elvis, I believe. Okay. Again, a toast to his memory. And go out there and act on those thoughts. Act on those thoughts about life and death death act on those thoughts about getting that life insurance get that will and last testament plan your funeral it's no one else's job you're a grown-ass man plan your funeral go ahead and put it down on paper pay for it put it somewhere where people can easily find the information and you know check out you know flush your <laughs> don't don't take a dump without flushing the toilet right okay so when you when it's time for you to check out make sure you flush the toilet and get your sorry ass out of here all right then Peace.